Okay, so let's let's talk about online gaming. Yes. And and before we get into that, let's say like I want to say um, like today I think we need to separate out online gaming and streaming yeah. gaming, which uh, are similar but but have a lot of really different needs. And we want to just focus on online gaming. And so right. online gaming is when you use Zoom or Roll Twenty or or whatever to just play with your friends and. And whatnot, you know, streaming is where you're actually letting the whole world watch you play. And, right. Uh, but this is just this is more intimate. This is this is more like what we're doing now because we can't get together in mm -hmm. person, right? Um, and and you know, some of us have been doing it a while because we can't get together in person because you know someone might live in Chicago and someone else might live in in Seattle, so. Um, there's a lot of good reasons why you want to uh, play online games. Uh, Darcy, what, what what online games have you played recently? Uh, you just mentioned Burn Bright, obviously. Yeah, I got to play Burn Bright. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> I actually ran a game of it uh, online, but for my two roommates who live in my apartment. So that was kind of fun and, and weird and in between. But because a lot of the, I wanted to show them the Roll20 interface. So we were kind of oh, gaming online sense. in the same house. <laughs> Um, when, uh, let's see, what else have I played? I got to play, um, I got to play during our MCG online summit, which was a blast. Um, so played some different things, some of which I'm at liberty to talk about, some of which I'm not. Um, and the other game I played was, uh, I got to play, be a player in a Numenera game run by, um, an old friend and, uh, just sort of over Zoom and two people were in the same, uh, room and and the rest of us were sort of remote. So I feel like there's been a lot of kind of amalgam. You know, sometimes you get a couple people in a room or the same apartment since we're all, you know, trapped inside. Right. <laughs> and I think it, it works out pretty well. Yeah. 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 Um, I've also, like like so many of us, been doing a lot of online gaming recently. We, you know, all of our play tests are now online. And mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned Invisible Sun, which has a lot of really particular challenges because it is a game specifically designed to embrace yeah. tabletop play. And, uh, you know, when you're not sitting around the table, you have to kind of come up with some solutions for, for that managing the cards on the, on the, uh, path mm -hmm. of sons and, and all the different things, but, but it's still really fun and, and works out actually better than I thought it would. Mm -hmm. But, I think that in general, like, you know, if you're used to gaming in the same room with your friends, right? Like, I think that there's just sort of an inherent challenge and it, and it just has to do with human psychology mm -hmm. of like, we react and relate to people in the same room with us different than we react yeah. to, you know, a, a, a face on a screen or, you know, six faces on a screen or whatever. And, and, and so we have to work a little bit harder, I think, to overcome those. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the, some of the things that you do, Darcy, to, to kind of overcome those problems? Yeah, um, I think uh, the, the chapter of Your Best Game Ever that deals with online gaming um, breaks down some components of the sort of what, what that barrier is in, in a really good way. And I think one of the ones that sticks out most to me is really that um, attention whether or not you choose to use video um, affects things, right? And one of the things it might affect is that you might be on work calls all day and you might be Zoomed out. So, you know, right. Zoom might be, the video might be kind of fatiguing to you in some ways. On the other hand, I find that when you don't have video on, um, I've noticed that it's it's a little easier to for players uh, not to have that eye contact, and so it's easier for your my brain to get distracted, to check my phone, to not have a when I don't have something visual to settle on, like another person's face or maybe um, a pretty piece of art. I I find it a little harder for me to keep um, focused solely on the game and not whatever else is on my computer, my cat next to me, you know. So right. that attention is one of the pieces of the barrier that I think I struggle with. I'm suddenly reminded of this time when I was, I was in college, obviously, you know, before there was online gaming and uh, one of the players, it was a, it was sort of a key moment in the game, a key session, um, important things were happening. And one of the players couldn't make it because he had a big test following day, mm. but he 
call on the phone oh and uh, was was just kept wanting updates and would keep calling. Oh. What's going on now? What's going on now? And eventually, just like asked for the for someone to put the phone yes. their phone like down in the middle of the game so he could hear and kind of participate. And and we all just kept saying, "Why? If you're going to do this, why don't you just come over?" <laughs> uh, but. Um, yeah, so he he was playing without video, I guess. Um, but, I, but in the end, was actually playing the game, right? Uh, there's um there's a game I used to play on Monday nights of Thirteenth Age, and uh, I just for various reasons, a weekly game is like a little too much for me, and so um, I haven't played. But they all moved to Discord, and so I I technically can like hop in at any point and just listen to one of their games. Um, and so I've done that once or twice when, uh, you know, I saw in Discord that they're they're going to face off a big NPC that I was really excited by. And so sometimes I'll like, you know, work on some overlays and just listen to uh, a game being played. And uh, I, I mean, I guess that's sort of streaming culture too, right? It's It can be kind of fun to, to listen to other people having fun. But so I, I feel for that player, <laughs> even though he should have just come over, but very charming. <laughs> He wasn't studying. He yeah. should have just. <laughs> um, one of the things I like to consider too is that you know there's the invisible barrier of um, you know we're online and so it seems like so many th physical things have been removed, but you know there's there's actually a number of challenges. Um, but you know I've been thinking too about the ways that meeting in person are have their other barriers. So um, something I was really glad to see called out in your best game ever is about um, like parents with kids. Uh, right. you know, I think uh, kids are, from what I hear, kids are a lot of work and, uh, very <laughs> rewarding, but take up a lot of time. And so the amount of time it takes to get to a game session. And if those game sessions tend to be long, cause while you're over there, you want to maximize your opportunity. I think a lot of those get lifted or eased when we moved online, um, or can be. For eased. sure. Right. <laughs> I mean, even if as a parent, you still have to kind of attend to your kids occasionally right. right yeah yeah you're still you know you still get to be part of 75 percent of the game as mm -hmm. opposed to zero and right it's better than nothing mm -hmm. um and obviously you know like we, we talked about too like sometimes just distance right um, keeps us apart in fact you know i just want to encourage everybody watching like you know if there's somebody that you, you know used to game with and or mm -hmm. used you know we're great friends with but unfortunately distance and whatnot mm -hmm. has separated you now is the time if you yeah. haven't already reached out to that person right like I, I know a lot of people have you know done the thing where like their regular game group that meets is now online well mm -hmm. now's the time you can also add that person who's yeah. on the other side of the continent from you too right um yeah. it's just as easy there's absolutely no difference if they're down the street or in another country. Yeah, um, that, that's a great point. And I, one thing I really loved doing when I had a little more time um, back in the day was uh, was like running Numenera demos for strangers at friendly local game stores. Like I loved it. I did it obsessively for a couple of months. And then, you know, the many, many hours on the CTA with like, you know, dozens of pounds of books were like a little much for me. Um, but, you know, you can, uh, through places like the Cypher Unlimited Discord, um, you know, there's lots of places and cons that are going online that, you know, I, I think one thing I really loved was picking up games and running it for like new people. And I think that's something that now that we're all sort of used to going back online, there's a lot of opportunity for. Yeah, it makes that that a lot easier. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to mention two completely different, but I think things that make online gaming in 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 a way better than in person mm. gaming. Uh, some advantages that that we definitely, as we enter into this uh, into this realm, um, we want to take advantage of. I know that in my current Invisible Sun game, I have made huge use out of uh artwork mm. um if if uh if you've ever had the chance to take a look i use pinterest i have 
tons and tons and tons of Pinterest uh, pages, one dedicated to each of the MCG games, plus a bunch of other stuff. Um, and, you know, I will take cool imagery from, you know, my Invincible Sun board, right? And I will put it in, uh, you know, share my screen because we play on Zoom. Mm -hmm. It's really easy. And, you know, I get to say, you see this, right? And I don't know, there's something very nice about, okay, for a minute there, I don't have to think about people staring at me yeah. right they're staring at the cool monster or whatever um it kind of it almost kind of gives me a zoom break yeah in a way right um and you know plus it engages everybody and and it you know we're already all staring at screens right so you know why not utilize that and and give them something really cool to look at mm -hmm. um obviously roll 20 mm -hmm. um does this really well and you know gives everybody a map and everything mm -hmm. if, if, if you need that for your game and um that's a great thing um but i also want to jump on another thing um and darcy you'll remember i think it was last halloween i ran uh, uh, a creepy uh game that was all online mm -hmm. and what i wanted to do with that game was embrace the fact that it was all online mm -hmm. so the conceit of that was that it was actually like the the story of the game was it was a bunch of people on a Zoom call. Right. And and then weird stuff happening. But one of the things that I was able to utilize in that game were all the different ways we have to communicate. And you can use this in any game that you play, right? You can mm -hmm. send people, you know, if there's some information that you want only one player to to know about, right? You can send them a text. Yeah. You can contact them on, you know, Slack or or what, you know, there's so many different avenues for that. Um, and, and that's really interesting. And, and I have, I don't feel like I've even fully yeah. explored all of the different avenues for that, but, um, but, but there's something, there's something to that, right. In, in a, in a way that, you know, in, when you're in person, you've only got one way to communicate with right. everybody, right. So that's kind of interesting. And, and those different venues, uh, do you have different feels, right? Like I, um, I kind of associate, you know, Slack is sometimes where like work lives and text is where certain kinds of conversations happen and Gchat is another. Um, I, so I think you can take advantage of that. Um, that's a great point. Uh, another game that I got to play at last Big Bad Con was Alice is Missing. And that is a oh, game, right. uh, kind of a mystery thriller game uh, that happens all over text. So you're texting people um, and it's silent. And so, um, and that was really intense, a really intense experience to, um, to be, you know, waiting, waiting for that message to come in. So I think there's a lot of dynamics that can be taken advantage of there. Um, something about the visuals is that, you know, I, I've been thinking about how that ties into what Shauna talks about when you're building a setting and trying to get everyone on the same page, these kind of touchstones, what do people have that they, that we all have the same, um, you know, experience of pointing back to, you know, what's, what's affecting all of our moods, even though we're in different places. Um, and I, th I think that's really smart. And, you know, no matter, you know, I know that Sean likes to use a lot of, uh, cool backgrounds and stuff and, you know, weird effects on his zoom video feed to sort of evoke that. So I think there's ways for the players to get it in addition to the GM, which is very fun. It is really cool. And I think, I mean, to just delve down pretty deep here, mm -hmm. like there's an interesting aspect to that. Like when I'm running a game in person, I sometimes like to not use artwork mm -hmm. and, and visual aids like that because I want to describe the thing that people see. And then I want everyone to have in their own right. head, their own vision of it. Yeah. Um, especially, especially if I'm running like horror or, or anything like that, because, yeah. you know, what's scary to you is going to be different than what's scary to someone else. And so I want them to have that experience um, for themselves, like in their own imagination. But uh, like you were just saying, right, there is such a value to do it, in it the exact opposite way, right? And give everybody the exact building looks like this is what this NPC looks like and give them a piece of art. Like, I think that there's, I think there's very distinct reasons why you want to yeah. make one of those choices or the other, but online gaming, I think 
I think you definitely want to lean toward the visual with the touchstones because they're just, you know, there's the invisible wall that we keep talking yeah. about that exists when you're online and it's such a great way to overcome it. Yeah. Um, one of the questions in chat is asking about tools that we might use when we're online gaming. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of us tend to play games like Cypher System games that are um, a little lighter mechanically to run. And so you can get by with, you know, just a Zoom call or just a Discord chat. Um, but one of the things that I've been enjoying, you know, in addition to things like Pinterest boards or places where we can all go look at art together, um, I've really been enjoying um, using Notion, the note taking app. Mm. And mm -hmm. uh, it has some cool templates for like RPG campaigns. And I found it really useful uh, in part because I think one of the ways that I engage with games um, that, that doesn't usually work when I'm streaming, uh, unless I do it digitally, is taking notes. Um, I think that like, you know, if you've ever played a game with me in person, a lot of times as a player, I'm just like scribbling stuff down and it's just helping me kind of tactilely experience the game. And I've really been in getting that out of uh, Notion when I'm at my computer, I can just quickly like, you know, type a few things. I could still look at the camera. And so I'm not like disengaging from the video, but I still have like written down that NPC's name. And um, I've been able to kind of go through my logs of just some kind of stream of consciousness note-taking um, and clean them up later as I remember what happened. And I, I think that online games you know, they can produce a record in ways that sometimes is a little harder to access for in-person games. And that record might be, you know, development modes that are happening in Slack in between your Invisible Sun games. I know a lot of people do that. And it's it's nice to have that record. Um, if you are streaming a game or just recording your Zoom call uh, with your friends, you have that that video for the player who was missing to go listen to for sometimes I'll like listen to previous sessions um, of just non-streamed games, if I've recorded them, if I'm a GM, it, it reminds me, it gives me a chance to look back and think about, oh, the players were really engaged with this piece. I should, that player was really uh, so excited about this. I get reminded and it kind of helps me prepare for the next session. So I, I think the online gaming experience gives us a lot of ways in which we can, you know, capture more of that experience and hold on to it a little longer. Yeah, I think, and, and not everyone is going to agree with me on this. This mm -hmm. is probably different for different people. But for me, it's if I'm playing an online game, it is hugely advantageous to like have everything in that same space. Mm -hmm. Like, it, like I almost think of it as like a mental space. It's so like the fact that I can run a cipher or I can play in a cipher system game, for example, mm -hmm. and I'm playing over Zoom and I see everyone's faces. But I've got our form fillable character sheets that you can. Yeah. Um, so it's all right there. Uh, as opposed to, you know, like looking at the camera, but also having my notes yeah. and my character sheet and my books and everything. Um, like I love to use PDFs when mm -hmm. I'm doing online gaming. I just I, I, somehow mentally it helps me like keep focused on the virtual world yeah. right? as opposed to like I forget that there's even <laughs> the actual room around me anymore. Right. right. Um, I've been thinking about that in the way that um, a little bit of effort in preparing some materials, like what will you specifically need for this specific game? You know, basically front loading that work and getting all the materials you want sort of digitally, even if you could have it in, a, in your book. Like, I right. think there's a lot of value to that. And I think that, you know, that that's extra work, but I think it is usually worth it in my experience. And so sometimes that's taking a character sheet that's physical and just typing it into the form fillable one for me. Um, sometimes that's knowing that I want, you know, this adventure. And so I'm going to have the PDF of that up, but I want this creature from a different book. So I'm going to have this creature's, you know, page up in a different PDF. And so getting all of that set up so that I don't have to go looking for it uh, is, is very valuable to me. I think the like, the searching for a thing is something that I have less patience for when I'm running an online game that I do in person. And I think, I think that's yeah. probably true. I would love to actually talk to a psychologist and find, I bet there is a, th I bet there is a, a thing, right. Mm -hmm. uh, where it's hard. Like if you're, if you're like interacting online and whatnot, and, and you've got most of your materials there online and whatnot, but then suddenly you have to like look for something in a physical book. Mm -hmm. 
like I, I'm imagining that there's a, a mental switching of gears yeah. there that that actually you know kind of slows you down probably a little mm-hmm. bit. I, I I feel that way is true for me anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Do you roll physical dice uh, when you're rolling, or do you like to use dice? Well, rollers? most of the time I run games, and most of the time I run yeah. MC games, <laughs> so I don't roll any yeah. dice. Um, if you know, I like online die rollers mm-hmm. if I'm playing online. Um, I think it's pretty cool. And I think it's pretty cool that you, everyone gets to see it. Not that, yeah. not that there's not, not because I'm worried about cheating, but because I think there's something cool about seeing other people's die rolls. Mm-hmm. Um, even if it's just numbers on a screen, as opposed to just kind of hearing the clatter clatter, <laughs> I got a seven. Right. Yeah, right. Um, but, but we do both. Yeah. Um, certainly an invisible sun it, running Invisible Sun online is is a little bit different yet again from all of this because there are these physical elements. Right. And um, I mean, uh, there are ways to do even those online, but mm-hmm. but I don't, right? Mm-hmm. I still have the Path of Suns board in front of me and I'm still putting physical yeah. cards down and just kind of holding them up and saying, okay, you know, I'm playing the mis- Misunderstood Beast on, mm-hmm. on Indigo. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it, w- it would be on, on some level now that I'm actually thinking about it and saying this out, lo- out, out loud, I'm thinking maybe I should figure out a way to do all of that, um, virtually. That would be cool. Yeah, I think, I think it's possible. So it's pretty cool. Uh, things, you know, chat's basically been, uh, reacting, talking about, it seems like lots of us have different preferences on exactly how we want our online line set up, just like we have different preferences and how we do kind of in-person games. Right. So for sure. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about minis? This is sort of getting off topic, but this is a, this is a casual chat. What's your <laughs> stance on minis? <laughs> Well, obviously, um, <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're talking about like something in roll 20, mm. uh, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, you know, because especially if you do the, I don't know, do they call it fog of war? Right. Roll 20, right. Where you can only see what you can actually see. And, and mm-hmm. that's, that's pretty cool. Um, obviously the, the, you know, old dungeon dragons designer in me is, yeah. is sort of, uh, triggered in a good way by that mm-hmm. kind of, thought. um, you know, I, so, a long time ago, I used to run uh, a, a third edition D&D game for a group of people, and one of them moved away. Mm. And uh, uh, But he was kind of wealthy. And so what he did was he left a laptop with us um, that we would just like sit in where he <laughs> used to sit, right? And then he had two different webcams um, that he could control over, oh the, over the internet, right? <laughs> and so it was it was kind of like playing online, but just for him. Yeah. So he he would have a top down because we used a battle net with miniatures. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he would we, we, he was able to see all of that. Um, but then he also had this other, like I said, that he could control. And so like there'd be like this scrolling little <laughs> zzz, <laughs> Which is a little creepy, actually. Yeah. <laughs> the little big brother, you know, uh, 1984 kind of. Oh, my gosh. Watching us. But, um, but, but it was a way to make miniatures usable. Yeah. Uh, right. Was to have a camera focused yeah. on them, but still a camera that could look at the people. Because that's the problem that I worry about mm-hmm. when it comes to online gaming with miniatures is that you become so focused on the minis. Yeah that you're no longer interacting with the people. Right. And, and that's the important part of gaming, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. Um, you know, I'm very, I tend to run very theater of the mind games. And so I haven't run many games where it, it, it really matters. Are you five, you know, or 10 feet away from that person? Right. Um, where we kind of really need grid combat or anything, but uh, man, for the the finale of my Numenera campaign, the first campaign I ever ran, uh, I ran it with another GM. It it just became clear that like the big epic battle at the end, um, it it did sort of you know the stakes were high enough and the the field was complex and interesting and weird enough that it kind of did matter where we were in relation to each other. So we busted out you know weird things to represent each other and had Mountain Dew cans as the tower <laughs> and um, we sort of just naturally ended up using um, kind of minis in play and uh, you know uh, 
I think that like ever since then, I've been like, huh, minis, <laughs> you know, uh, maybe more useful minis or tokens. And uh, for sort of physical play, I know we're, we're going to have uh, Numenera character and creature standups coming out really soon, which I'm they very excited really for. Cool. They're I'm excited. Beautiful. Oh, great. They they turned yes. out. Yeah. And then the the sort of online piece of that is that I just discovered, and this is because I'm a fool who's never used, who doesn't use tokens a lot. Uh, I just discovered that token stampers exist. So if you, oh, right. if you want to pick, you know, you've got your cool Pinterest board of a bunch of cool pieces of art for um, NPCs you're going to use or inspirations, you can take those art pieces and there are little web apps that will stamp a cute little like colored token ring around it and make it an easy downloadable file. So knowing that those exist make me much more interested in um, if I am going to to want to play a game where it sort of matters where people are at, making my own custom little tokens really easily. Very cool. Okay. I think those are, those are all we had for you today, chat. Thank you so much for closing out the week with us, uh, talking a little bit about online game and just getting to hang out with you. This is always really appreciated. And, um, we hope to see you at future sessions of split the party and, you know, have great online gaming if you get to it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And stay safe. Yes, please. I hope you're all hanging in there.